Okay, so for the heart lab, you know, it's going to be based on models. One of the problems with the models is they're all slightly different. So you're, you're stuck doing that classic learn them all. I'm just going to walk through some of the things in the list, not maybe everything. The biggest thing you want to do to be successful with the heart is figure out right from left. Because if you did it wrong, every answer will be wrong. Because you'll be memorizing what's on the right, and pretty soon you're telling me it's a bicuspid when it's a tricuspid, and then I'm just laughing as I'm taking points away. So, I, I cry, but okay. So what you want to do is visualize this picture, and this is what a normal heart looks like in a patient. So this patient's right, the patient's left. So a couple little tricks, it varies. The plumbing comes out the top. If you look at the apex, which is the A, it tends to point kind of a little to the left, not always. You want to look at these blood vessels, see how they cross like this and down that. So if you visualize that in your head, hopefully you'll always get the right and the left correct. So the apex tends to point to the left. You tend to have a red thing this way, a red thing this way. The aorta kind of goes up and back. But try to figure that out, because if you get it wrong, you're doomed. But let's go through it. Pretend you got this right. Let's find some things. I said apex was here. Where is the base? The base is the top. It seems backwards, but this is a triangle. The base is the flat. Apex, the base is the top of the heart. So, like, where the veins are on? The yeah, so base, if down. I were pointing up here, you could say that's all the base, where the okay. plumbing is at the top. Okay. It's not as much a thing as a place. Okay, so tell me what you call the sac around your heart. Pericardium, right? Around my heart. Peri around cardium. So the visceral would be where? On the heart. Remember, visceral means on the organ. The parietal would be on your what? What's that? The, the, the cavity. 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 The chest, right? So visceral is always on the organ. Parietal is always on the cavity. So you have those two mixed membranes. From 231, you're supposed to know. And what's between the visceral and parietal? What lives in that little space? Fluid. Sarah's fluid. Very good. Go back to 231 and review that again. What do you call the muscle of a heart? Myocardium. Myocardium. Very good. So the sac that's in is the pericardium, the muscle is the myocardium. A. Roman numeral one. Tell me what room that is. Atrium. Which one? Right. Right. Right atrium. Right atrium. Right. Patient's right, upper room. Roman numeral three. Tell me what it is. Right, right. right ventricle. Right. Roman numeral four. Left right. right. ventricle. Right. And you can't see the other one that's back in there. But again, get your right and left straight. So if this is the right atrium, that's the right ventricle. Number three is a vowel. Which one? Tricuspid. Tricuspid. You try before you buy. Number six is the bicuspid. E. Pulmonary. What about pulmonary? Because it's coming off my right side into number four. What tube is number four? Pulmonary artery. Pulmonary artery. It's leaving my right side going to my lungs. You can't see the veins, so the pulmonary veins would be going the other side. Let's do. Number seven. Aorta. 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 Let's do number one. Uh, Vena cava? Vena cava would be good, or superior to be good. These little long stringy things that you mentioned in lecture. Cordae yeah. tenene. There would be heart strings. Now the trick is, if you look where I is pointing, that's where the cords attach to your heart. What do you call the things the cords are stuck to in the heart? Papillary what? Muscles. 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 So the valves are the flaps, the white things, the cords are chordae tendinae, and the bumps are the cords attached to the papillary muscles. So they're not all the same thing, they're all dealing with the same work. Can you say that one more time? Sure. So, for example, three, tricuspid valve, H, chordae tendinae, the strings, and I is the papillary muscle where the string is glued into your heart. So those papillary muscles are the glue that holds the string. In the ventricles, all that folded, bumpy-looking myocardium has a name. What do you call the netted meat of the ventricle? Trabeculae endocardium? No. Trabeculae carnate. If you go above your chordae tendinae, trabecula means kind of netted carny. Meat. Meat. Literally, Roman, netted meat. So the bumps in your ventricle, all of them, are trabeculae carne. There's a different word for the bumps in your atrium. Atria is sort of like near your chest. Pectinate. Pectinate muscles. So classic question on a quiz. 
pectinate muscles are in your atria, papillary muscles are in the ventricle, but the trabeculae carnae are in the ventricle bumps, not the muscles. Does that all make perfect clear? Please say it right. again. Okay. Pectinate muscles are in your atria. Papillary muscles are in your ventricle. And trabeculae carnae is all the bumps in the ventricles. Even the pec. The yes, muscle. even the papillaries would be part of the trabeculae carnae. Be careful of those muscle words because pectin and papillary are similar but not the same. So we got our valves, we got our, our, our heart strings and our bumps. Okay, so what I'm going to do is 26, I'm going to say is a room or chamber. Uh, Which chamber would it be? Right atrium. Right atrium. Number 23 is a chamber there, that would be? Right, right ventricle. Right. So tell me 61. Uh, tell me 83. Uh, tell me 68. Uh, Papillary muscle. Papillary muscle. That's just what we went through. So there's a whole different view. All right. But what we're going to do now on these ones is we're going to focus on the stuff on the outside of the heart now, which are coronary arteries and veins. So I'm going to go back. Blood vessels on the outside of the heart are called your coronaries. They feed the heart. So yeah. the trick is, again, you have to know right from left. If you go to page 26, they list all these coronary arteries. And here's where the life gets exciting. We didn't really have time to talk about this lecture. But you remember your circle of Bruce Willis in your brain? Yeah. 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 Why was it a circle? Because if you cut off one, you can take it really. off. Your heart does the same thing. These blood vessels all connect to each other. They're all one big ring. We just name them differently everywhere you're looking. So if you're on a model with your finger, you'll end up being in the same place more than one way. But it's, they're named differently. So the trick is to realize most of these things are all the same tube. Just name the different regions you're at. So if I point to 37, that's a blood vessel on the left side of my heart. What would you call a blood vessel on the outside of the left side of my heart? That's my left coronary artery. So it comes out of my left side. Okay? If there's a left coronary, that tells you there should be a what? Right. Let's see if that's true. Indeed, there it is. That's coming out on the right side on the surface of my heart. That's my right coronary. Alright? Now, if you look at the right coronary, if you come down here, you'll notice it starts to go kind of under my heart. So if you look right, right here, right, it starts to curve under, and then it'll come back up over here. That's the same blood vessel all the way around. But we give it different names just to mess up your life. Okay. So, let's go back to this one. This was my left coronary artery. You notice it splits here, and part of it goes around the back of the heart, would come back around over here. It's going to make you circle under your heart. Can anyone look on your list and find something that says circular? Circumflex. circumflex. So the right and the left basically circumflex and go under the heart. It's easier to see when you're looking at the model than not. Then, part of it goes down the front of your heart. How would you say, down the front of your heart? Anterior interventricular artery. Thank you. Anterior interventricular artery. In the front, between my ventricles, artery. That's right here. The anterior interventricular. It goes between my ventricles in the front. So your right becomes the anterior interventricular and also becomes a circumflex, like right there on the picture. <laughs> Circumflex is where the right branch is behind the heart. There's the, I'm sorry, the left branch is behind the heart, and there's the anterior interventricular one. So, and then it would come around the other side. So now we're going to name some sulcuses thingy, Mowers. Your, an, your, your anterior interventricular is actually in a little groove. How do you say groove in the brain? So what do you call that groove there where it's living? Anterior yes, they match the same. So the artery and the sulcus are named the same. So the anterior interventricular artery is living inside the anterior interventricular sulcus or groove. So the, yellow part the yellow part. On the model, it doesn't always look like a groove. But depending on the model you're on, it varies somewhat. On this model, 
This red one right where my mouse is, I believe is interpreted as being the marginal, because it's on the edge. On the other models, it's actually further down. So I'm just going to make a blanket statement. If one of them's over here on the right side, that's going to be the marginal. That should be on the edge of the heart, so margin of the heart. That's the marginal artery. So I have my right coronary becoming my circumflex with my marginal going down the side. Make sense? Here's the problem. The veins are named differently. They're named cardiac, not coronary. So you have coronary arteries and a cardiac vein. And luckily for you, there's only one vein you have to know, really, of any great importance. We turn the heart around. Look at number 43. That looks like a very big vein, does it not? How would you say big vein of the heart? The great cardiac. The great cardiac vein comes across your heart and drains that blood in here. Just before it goes in your vena cava, there's a big opening there. How would you say opening in the heart if you're the coronary sinus? Right? So the cardiac vein, but it's a coronary artery. Same meaning, different. Which one was the coronary artery? Sinus. Sinus. Great cardiac vein, big coronary blue. sinus. The, big blue. the great cardiac vein goes to the coronary sinus? Yes, that's where it drains in your vena cava. They're all basically one part. Big blue. So just be careful because it's C and C, but cardiac for the vein. I will dock you wrong if you put coronary vein or cardiac artery. <coughs> that's not what it is. Inside your atrium, there's a hole when you're a baby between the right and left that closes. So when it closes, it makes a depression that's oval, literally in Latin. So that's your fossa ovalis. If you were a baby, it'd be the foramen ovale, because it's a hole when you're a baby. The problem is that every model, they're showing that differently. Some will be high, some will be low. Some will be oval, some will be a circle. So you don't want to memorize oval up here, because one of the models has it as a circle. Just find something on the inside wall that should look vaguely circular. And that would be the most of the It's between, Yeah, it is, but it's between the right and left atrium, actually. the interatrial wall. Okay. Yeah. That's the sinus. And the sinus comes into right next to it, so you might see a sinus too. So let me show you why this can be complex. Okay, so look at this one. My last little blur here. Okay, so the fossa ovalis on this model is 58. It's like a half oval. These represent the blood vessel or the sinus. So you got to be careful. On this one, it, it sh you think it should be higher, but it's that one. So every model has a different ovalis. Pay some attention to each model and find that out. Okay? Otherwise, the rest of the stuff I think you can figure out vaguely on your own. But I'm sure you can't, in fact. So I'm going to be quiet so you get the rest of your lab to study and do your things. But do blood slides, heart models, blood typing.